Hey everyone. My name is Zach Wilson, and today I want to talk to you guys about a book that I loved, Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. I think that of all the books that I've read in 2021 so far, this has been my favorite LGBT queer novel. It broke my heart and it caused me to reconsider my worldview, and most importantly, it made me laugh. So, so it's about a trans woman who is falling apart. Um, her name is Reese. She is glamorous. She's catty. She's funny. She's damaged. She's the kind of person who just captivates you. Um, but he might also be a sociopath, hypothetically. It's, it's tricky. She's in love with this woman named Amy. And Amy is uh, smart and she's gone to college and she's successful and she's complicated and she's intriguing and she's uh, quite analytical, but in a way that still like needs a lot of confidence and is still she's still finding herself as a person um, and Amy and Reese fall super in love and they have this great relationship until it's not great anymore they break up and Amy a trans woman detransitions de and by detransitioning I mean that she stops so she decides to stop living as a female presented person and she decides to change her exterior so that she seems male she wants to see male again. Amy decides to be Ames to detransition and to live as a cis man. Um, I'm going to describe Amy and Ames um, with they them pronouns um, because I think that Ames as a character is quite confused about their own gender um, and that's okay to be confused and be questioning and so um, once Ames is broken up with Reese and has detransitioned, Ames gets their boss pregnant. Katrina. Um, and with Katrina, Ames has the chance to start a family. But Ames can't start a family without Reese. Like, Ames tells Katrina right away, like, I can't be a parent with you unless my ex, this glorious, hilarious, dramatic trans woman, is part of our family. And so in this story, the three people, um, Reese, a trans woman, Katrina, a cis woman, and Ames, a detransitioned uh, person living currently um, in a male performing sort of way, the three of them decide to have a child together. So there are three reasons for the most part that I think you should read this book. And the first reason is the love story between Reese and Ames. Um, they fall in love when Ames again is a trans woman. Um, and Reese and Amy have this like electric, passionate relationship. And it's like the first relationship that either of them has had where they feel understood by the person that they love. Um, and they're both damaged, profoundly damaged. They've been through so much together. Um, and there's this question, can love save us? I don't like myself. I'm a mess. I'm lost. But this person loves me and maybe in that love I can find redemption. And that's something that we get to explore. And I think that the story does a gorgeous job of explaining that question of whether damaged people can love each other healthy. I mean, for two trans women to love each other in such a powerful way, I don't know, it's iconic. The second reason that I think you guys should check out this book is its deconstruction of what motherhood means. We know that uh, traditionally the way that we've been taught to condition to think of love motherhood is to think of the heterosexual white marriage. Um, think the house, the white picket fence, um, 50s suburbia, gender roles, like that's motherhood, right? Like that's what we're taught to believe is motherhood. And so the author deconstructs that idea of motherhood and she makes it queer, right? For so long, queer people didn't have that possibility, right? There were legal hurdles, um, just your existence could be illegal. Um, but beyond that, there were hurdles like poverty and access to health care and violence that made it hard for queer people to even live to be age 30, right? Especially if you were trans, particularly if you were trans, right? So to think of parenthood seemed <laughs> impossible, laughable. Um, and yet this book, things have changed. I mean, not enough. There's so much further to go. But Tori Peters does this great job of advocating for the fact that queer people are ideal candidates for parenthood, right? I mean, who understands the importance of unconditional love more so than queer people? Queer people have been kicked out of their homes. 
um, for loving who they love. Queer people have lost family and they've been homeless for being who they are, right? Especially trans people, right? So these experiences have taught us what it means to love in a way that's authentic and unconventional and unconditional. Um, and I think another reason that the uh, Tori Peters argues that trans people and queer people as a whole deserve to be parents is that we've created these found families, right? The idea that even if you don't have biological parents who love you, you can find family and other queer people. You can take care of them. You can mother them. You can save them with your love. Um, and so the story says maybe a romantic relationship isn't enough to redeem us, but maybe parenting, maybe that form of love can help us find our salvation. And then finally, the third reason I think you should check out the Transition Baby is just its unwavering commitment to the visibility of trans people, right? Like in the 20th century, trans stories were grim. They were about AIDS and HIV and prostitution and sex work and transphobia and the fight to even live. Um, those stories are important, but they're dark and trans people deserve other alternatives. And so in the 21st century, um, we get stories about trans people that are optimistic, but they're also sanitized. You have these coming out stories that cater to cis straight audiences, and they kind of hide how difficult it actually is to be trans in a way that is meant, I think, to make straight people and cis people feel better about themselves. You don't have to change because coming out as trans is easy and everyone's gonna love you and this is how far we've come and let's pat ourselves on the back on the progress we've made, like, blah. So Detransition Baby envisions a new way to tell queer stories. Queer people are allowed to be damaged and to be broken. And it honestly portrays in a way that doesn't hold back any punches just how much uh, trans people go through, right? But it's still funny, it's still smart, it's still contemporary, and it's still hopeful. In terms of critiques, I only have one. Um, the story has a flashback structure where the breakup that Reese and Amy have um, is the past and the, the present tense is um, this really unique, innovative co-parenting situation between Reese, Ames, and Katrina. Um, and really, I think the present tense worked a lot better. It was way more interesting. It was faster paced. I, I mentioned before that I loved the love story between Reese and Ames, and I did. Um, they had a great love story, but by making it all flashback, I think it took away from the energy of the story and it slowed it down a little bit. And so I think that is one issue with the story. I think that the structuring of the story, I think it would have been better to um, reflect on the past in a way that wasn't quite so like, it, that didn't weigh down the story to the extent that it did. In terms of like some misgivings or like some misgivings the audience might have, I do think that this is a predominantly white love story and that's okay. I don't want to erase um, the fact that the story's third main character, Katrina, is mixed race. She is Jewish and she's Asian and both parts are really important to her identity. And as a character, she's well developed, but she is white passing. She has a lot of privilege in that way. Um, and the story is not about her, right? She's a part of it. There is a thruple situation, but we never get her point of view. Like the story is never from her perspective. And it's, it's not about cis people. The story is about um, trans women, right? And it's about two white trans women. And so if you're a black trans woman or a Latina trans woman, you might find yourself like a little bit frustrated by the lack of representation in the story of your experience. But on the other hand, this novel does show a total awareness of white privilege. Um, the author states like multiple times that Black trans women and Latina trans women have encountered way more structural racism. They've encountered way more homophobia and transphobia. That they're murdered more often. That they. She doesn't equate white trans experiences and Black and Latina trans experiences. Um, I think that she shows a lot of wisdom as a writer. And so, I think that we need more stories. We need better representation. Like hopefully this novel is just the beginning and we get way more stories with black and latina trans women where there is hope of being a parent and there is that level of inclusion um, i think this book is a step in the right direction another misgiving that you might have as a reader is the way the story kind of portrays feminism um, in the story feminism is kind of criticized at points for how it's excluded trans women and i think that's fair right like this is fourth wave feminism 
Like, we recognize at this point that trans women are women, right? But at the same time, like, we need to specifically understand that trans women encounter obstacles that other women do not face, right? And so I think that this book is crit critical of feminism in a way that's important. But I also think that um, some of the characters' behaviors maybe can be criticized by feminists, right? Like, the way that Reese in particular pursues femininity um, is a little old-fashioned in some ways, right? Like, Reese's understanding of what it means to be a woman, um, she pursues this, like, hyper-femininity that is, I don't know, it's the, it's the makeup and the heels, and that's not going to be the type of femininity that all women are going to want to pursue, but... Um, she fought for that femininity. She fought so hard. And I think that the hyper femininity that she has does go back to her past. Um, that, you know, in 2021 is not super um, in vogue. But again, like, there's not one right way to be a woman. <laughs> not that as a male, cis male uh, reviewer, I get to, like, have too much of an opinion on that. But um, there might be feminist readers who aren't super thrilled with that aspect of the book. Um, and then finally, I think that. I would be remiss not to mention that this book features abusive sex scenes. That the character Reese, once again, she's the controversial one here, I think, in some ways. Um, she has these sex scenes that she self-reflects are a bit banal, right? Um, she says sex on the edge of abuse is banal. And I think that she's absolutely right. But I think, speaking as a black man, I understand what it's like to be exoticized or fetishized and not seen as human in your sexual encounters. And so I think that as a trans woman, Reese experiences that too, um, probably way more than I do. Um, and I think that as a trans woman, she feels like at least I'm wanted. I might be treated horribly, it might be even abusive, but at least I'm not alone. Um, and I think that that should cause all of us to self-reflect on why do some people get options and others don't? Um, so I don't think the fault lies in Reese for kind of um, being drawn towards these relationships. I think that our society as a whole needs to change. Um, and I think that these sex scenes are uncomfortable for us as readers, but they're important as well because they happen and they're real and there's authenticity to these stories. Yeah, so you should definitely read this book. For me, reading this book made me more aware of my own privilege as a queer man. Um, I am cis, so I think that when I go to a gay bar, I think that sometimes I'm just like, oh, I'm like not going out to socialize with people I don't know. Like, but sometimes that unfriendliness can be really, it can reproduce uh, structural inequality, right, and hierarchies in the queer world. And so I think that it's this book's made me more reflective of what I can do to make spaces more uh, equitable for people who identify as femme people who are trans women, right? Like, so I think that that's really, really important to use our privilege in ways to elevate others. Um, and beyond that, just the exploration of detransitioning itself, um, the, the book is called Detransition Baby, after all, is super thoughtful, right? So the author's opinion, if I'm not mistaken, seems to be that if you're born trans, that's who you are. Um, but at the same time, Amy's story, AIM's story, uh, is really important because there is so much abuse that trans women experience, so much harassment. To want to be protected from that, to want to just live a life where you know that you're not going to be assaulted each day, to where you're not going to be the victim of violence, it, it becomes incredibly clear why uh, Amy doesn't feel comfortable living as a trans woman anymore. It doesn't mean that who she is has changed, um, but it means that how she performs her gender is changing in order to be safer in the society she exists in, right? And gender is performance. Like we read Judith Butler in our gender studies classes, or we at least like seen Instagram or like TikTok stuff that's like sharing those ideas. And so we understand that gender is uh, performed, right? And so Amy makes the controversial choice to detransition. And I don't think the author is saying that she made the right choice, but I think that we're supposed to empathize with her. Uh, to empathize with them and understand what they went through and why they made the choices they did. And I think truly the act of detransitioning is an indictment against our transphobic culture. We need to do more and we need to do better. So read this book. It's so freaking good. It's smart. It's funny. Um, it'll make you cry. Um, and it'll make you laugh and learn. So check it out. Detransition Baby by Tori Peters.
I hope you guys uh, found this review helpful. Bye.